We are putting fish in the boat even though it is horribly rainy. Something just happened right there. Hold on. Oh, gosh. Ah. <laughs> Fish going straight back down to the bottom. Whoop. Well, good morning. It's about 4 a.m. here in Knoxville, Tennessee, and Lois and I are headed out to chase a big old freaking catfish this morning. But let me tell you a pro fisherman move. Do not, at 11 a.m. after catching bait, eat Taco Bell when you got to be up at 4 a.m. the next morning because you're going to have a bad time. We at the Love's Truck Stop, filling up for this fishing trip. If you're ever down south, the Tennessee area where you gotta love, this is a good place to stop. It's always got good junk food and they have normal breakfast and stuff like that. It is right before the rain though. This video opener is at Love's and not the fireworks store. So we're classing it up just a little bit. But about to be daylight, we're almost down to Nick and Jack. We're gonna get, catch a big old giant catfish, hopefully or this giant front rolls through. It's gonna get real bad here about one or two o'clock. We'll have to get off the water, but I think we'll get an activity period before that happens. you can basically get and this is the beginning of uh gunnersville reservoir which leads all the way down to alabama it's one of the best catfish lakes in the country and we're going to come up we're going to fish this river section here for as long as the weather allows but we're going to start bumping early and see if we can pick up any active fish they're spilling at the dam here and uh you know that's a good time to do the bumping there's tons and tons of flow and it makes it really effective or a really great time to go out and do that because you got to have the flow to do it and then after that there's some deep hole river sections downstream down that way that we're going to check out and maybe do some anchor fishing on in this super heavy flow we'll see how it goes i had a really hard time getting bait last night me and brian went out for four and a half hours and caught nine big skipjack um which for a longer trip you know i would like to have about 20 but We'll make it happen. Here we go, baby. Welcome aboard, sir. Thank you. Your Cadillac awaits. But um, yee Let's get these fish. Yes, sir. About to be spilling over here. I have never ever fished down here from a boat, only from the bank in college when I was catching bait. So I ain't got a clue. We'll find out though. I'm gonna show you what we're using here first. This is a St. Croix Premier musky rod basically, but it's a really lightweight rod that's got a fast action tip so I can feel everything on the bottom. Whenever I'm ticking across something, that tip tells me. And I've got 65 pound braid, Suffix 832, to a three-way uh, barrel swivel. This is a 17 pound leader line for our weight and you, the weight here is probably one of the more important things because if you use too much weight, you get snagged constantly. If you don't use enough, you can't keep it on the bottom. And basically what you're doing out here when you're uh, bumping, you gotta figure out the exact amount of weight it takes to keep it on the bottom and bounce it back and what speed you need to go at to do that. And that's just different everywhere you go. It's different based on the water depth, how fast the current flow either is from the dam or whatever reservoir section you're on. And uh, you know how much juice you got left in your trolling motor too. If we run out of battery, we won't be able to do all that up there and we'll have to go downstream and anchor. But right now we're okay. 
And then we've got cut pieces of skipjack attached to a nine knot Charlie Brown circle hook. You gotta have a float so it floats it up and it doesn't get snagged as often. The fish we've caught have been on heads, but I threw on a smaller chunk just to see what would happen. And when you're bumping, the main gist of it is your boat's upstream in the current, nose forward, and the current's pushing back that way on the back end of the boat. And all you do is you hold the rod in your hand and you're bumping that weight up, letting it down. Bumping it up, letting it down. Now where we found the fish today, we started out um, on this particular area of the river. There's like a 14 foot flat right here, a shelf. And then there's another one over here. And we bumped either side of it, but all of our fish are coming straight in that chute uh, where the main current flow is. If they're real, real active, they'll push up out of that chute onto the flat and you'll start catching them. But we only had one bite up there and all of our bigger fish and fish we've caught have come from that chute. So we started shallow to see if they were active and then we just moved deeper until we found them. First fish of the morning, we are hooked up. We are bumping down here in this crazy fast water. It's about 40,000 CFS, four to five miles an hour of current. And we having to bump with four ounces on the trolling motor with nine speed turned on, just to slow us down enough to, to get it on the bottom and keep it on the bottom. And we're just working that bait back in the current. And uh, I got a decent one on. This guy ate a, a big skipjack head, nice blue cat. He's not quite hard, even for this size in this current. He just thumped the tarnation out of it. We're using a musky rod here with an Akuma Komodo. We got braided line. We got some nice blue cap to start the day with here. First drift. Oh, he kicked my head off. What a little turd. Man, he just thumped the heck out of it, too. Oh, he's fighting. Oh, he's fighting. It's gonna be my own net man. Come on, buddy. Nice 12 to 15 pounder to start the day with. Woo! Woo, baby. We getting in before the storm. All right. Good first fish. Here we go. Nice fish. Nice fish. Close to 15, probably. He had a big head. That's what he wanted. There we go. Look at that hook set. I got him in the side of the head. <laughs> Ain't that a wild hook set? How do I manage that? <laughs> I don't know, but we got him in, didn't we? All right. This guy got some mean teeth. Mean teeth. Oh, oh, oh. You're tearing me up, baby. Nice, pretty blue cat to start the day with. Tennessee River, Upper Gunnersville Lake, and the main flow. Look at the fog coming up in the background. Beautiful out here. Smoke on the mountains up there. This is what it's all about right here, fellas. Welcome to this episode of Top Knox Fishing. going live again
on again. He hit this thing like five times. Here we are again. <laughs> Pouring rain. Old familiar feeling. Pouring. But we brought a bilge pump this time. And you can see it down there. Bottle. I was not a Guggen today. <laughs> bottle is not effective. <laughs> yeah. Coke bottle. One of the most important parts of fishing out of a boat is not sinking. Horribly rainy. Something just happened to my bait there. Hold on. Oh, baby. Yeah. Oh. We hooked up with a drag peeler, a scream, a thumb burner. Man, when it hit, I hope the GoPro got it up there. It was just zipping line. Big time. Now he's just going upstream. Look at those big head shakes. He's just chilling. Here we go. This guy ate a skipjack head too. Oh baby. I don't know that he knows he's hooked. Well, I mean, I guess he does because he, he rips so much. <laughs> Yeah, dude, it looks sizable for sure. Oh, we got bubbles already. Woohoo! Oh, he's pulling line, baby. Get him line. Whoa, he's going. There he goes. This is a good one. This is a real good one. Oh, there's some skipjack butt behind us. There's some more line. He's more line. Dang. More line. Look at that squealing. Ooh, yeah, baby. He just thumped it, too. Oh, yeah, I love this. Come on, man. We ain't gonna horse him. We ain't gonna horse him. We got all the time in the world. Oh, baby. Look at them big head shakes on that rod tip. Look at that. You can see where he's going. Oh, he's peeling more line. He's, he's peeling the whole, he's pulling the boat around yeah. in circles. Look at all this drag. <laughs> I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh-oh. Oh, here it comes. Found the skippy. Here's the activity period. Yep. Right now. Oh. Do we got a tub? I think so. We got skipjack busting around. It's this big catfish bust, and we got this front coming in. I looked, I think it might be a flathead. Really? It looked brown, it might not be. Barely saw him. Look at that line. Saw some color. Put that camera at it. No, he's just taking more line now. He's going back down to the bottom. He's that's a good fish. Line. Yeah, that's a real good yeah. one. More line. Come on, buddy. I'm just easing him up. Oh, big 
blue. Yeah, it's a blue. Big blue. Good one. Yes. Yes. Uh, what a fight. What a fight. Look at the view. Victory. <laughs> we got him. I knew when he hit it, I was like, this is the one. Yep. This is the one. <laughs> that one's long as crap. Yeah, that's a tub, man. <laughs> as Britney Spears said, as Britney Spears said, oops, I did it again. <laughs> Look at that. Them teeth are sharp. That circle looks right in the corner of the mouth. He gonna bite the crap out of me. There we go, it's out. That's our bait we used right there. Fresh skipjack had I labored with with Brian last night for five hours to catch. Tub, baby. Tub. <laughs> How's he look? He looks big, that man. That big old boy. Yep. Look at that. Top Knox fishing. Top Knox fishing, baby. Welcome to the channel if you hadn't been here before. That's what we do. Okay, so one more time. <laughs> All right, I'm worn out yet again from a fight like that and this much flow. But we gonna release this big old blue cat, baby! Woo! Woo! Oh, gosh. <laughs> Heck yeah, let's get us another one. <laughs> There's that fish going straight back down to the bottom. Whoop! <laughs> it has been another successful morning out here adventuring on the Tennessee River. We're on the upper end of Gunnersville Reservoir, up in the tailwater system where the dam's at. And we caught some good fish and one big one. And uh, we have effectively nuked the trolling motor battery. So. We're gonna go downstream now, pick the boat up, let it drain, cause we've been getting dumped on all morning again. And uh, we're gonna fish some deep water downstream. This is kind of a shallow river, I mean, in general, normally for the Tennessee River, but there's some 50 foot deep water, like 14, 15 miles downstream. And I don't feel like driving all the way down there when it has the potential to thunderstorm on us. So we're gonna pick up and then go downstream, take us a little break. I want you guys to look at this view. It is just gorgeous out here. We got the mountains. The fog in the background, my finger, Lonus in the what was a mustache, but now it's a beard. My mans can grow a beard faster than me. I can't even grow a beard, but whatever. <laughs> I can, however, catch a catfish. You can. You have proven that today. <laughs> John T. Reed Parkway. Thank you. <laughs> a man's doesn't want to use the urinal. That's <laughs> what you get for drinking a bunch of caffeine. <laughs> He's got the walk. <laughs> Welcome to Big Daddy's Outdoors.
and fish a really deep hole that's about six miles upstream. But the wind kicked up so bad here that on this lake, Gunnersville Lake and really Wheeler, the current runs opposite of the wind and it makes huge waves. And they're like at two feet right now. We're on the, the back end of the front. Once that front moves out, those winds are really going to pick up and it's going to get two times worse. So we're going to have to call it. It's not really safe to be out here in a boat this small. On winter winds on a wheeler about two years ago, two big giant sea arcs sitting. This type of stuff. So we're going to have to call it head back to the ramp. He can pan around and show you how bad it is. It's not awful on the Good thing we came back because it flew the trolling motor batteries out the front of the boat. It was so bad. Sometimes catching a fish ain't worth it. And this was one of those scenarios where you just got to call it, unfortunately, for at least here. We still got to drive all the way back to Tennessee. You never know. We may find a little area we can fish, but that was not safe at all. We are back here at the man cave or the fish cave. After that fishing trip down there on Gunnersville Lake, it got really, really, really bad there at the end. There were some three foot waves, white caps, water was coming in the boat, and it was just really bad. And the area we were fishing at, as you heard me talk about maybe going down the lake there, or river, uh, runs east to west, and the current runs opposite of the wind when it comes in. So when that happens, um, they hit against each other and make these giant giant waves and for a boat of my size or really anything under uh, like a 24 foot boat uh, like a big giant boat or one of those western uh, sturgeon boats you really don't want to be out in that so we had to call it unfortunately even after driving three hours down there early that morning safety is more important than catching a big fish remember that um, you can play around the edges of storms but when it gets like that or it's starting to get like that you don't want to get caught out there in that if we had got caught in it we'd have to pull it up on the bank somewhere or back in a slough and just wait it out and who knows how long that would have lasted but we got a big old giant catfish it really really messed my thumb up if you saw the thumbnail that's um the gopro wasn't going but it bit down and then slapped me in the face and uh whew, that was a trip i'm exhausted from it still but I love doing it. I love sharing it with you guys. And we've had a whole lot of new people come to the channel. If you don't know me, I'm Mark Cooper. I love fishing. We striper fish. We catfish. We walleye. Trout. Everything just to share the outdoors and all the adventures of it. And now, may have a drone to film some stuff with too. So we're going to have some really cool footage fishing with different people, different techniques all over the country. And I'm excited to share that with you guys. Hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you later this week. I'm going to try to start doing uploads on Sundays and Tuesdays because those seem to be the best days for views. And um, it gives me a little bit of time to fish throughout the week with my normal job, or, or at least try to. So we had a great time on this trip. Lonis came with me. He's learning a whole heck of a lot. Great fisherman. Uh, we'll put the bucket time in, and he understands the work you got to do and the suck you got to go through to catch the big fish. So that's what it's all about, sharing that experience and that adventure and creating that story that you can go back and look 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 back on fondly even though it may have sucked in the moment for a little while it was awesome in the end so thanks you guys for coming along hit that like and subscribe button and we'll catch you next time